Salutations, bibliophiles. Let's build a digital bookshelf. I've been seeing a bunch of digital bookshelves crop up online that people have crafted for themselves of various types. And I wanted to have a go of doing that myself. So in this video, I'll show you what I've got together and how you can build your own digital bookshelf in d3.js and start visualizing it and mixing it up just as you like. I'm here in Observable HQ, where these kinds of D3 projects can be freely hosted. And I'm relying quite a lot on this book list repo by Aiton Lees. So thanks very much for that. And if you just want to see a reading timeline like this of your own reading, what you can do is take a fork of this project, load an export from Goodreads or a spreadsheet that you filled in, and get going. That's all you need to do. In the rest of this video, I'll just talk through this project so that you can start picking it apart and editing it as best suits you. So here at the top is just an image of part of my 2021 reading timeline. So when did I start a book? When did I finish it? Uh, what was it? Who was it by? And was it adhering to a category fiction or nonfiction in this case? We'll also look at creating custom tables in D3. And there's just a lot more you can do, of course, uh, in visualization terms with D3. Look down here, I've got the live, uh, live Gantt chart for all of 2021 rendered by D3, not an image. And if you plug in your own data, you'll see this update just as you like. Okay, so how do we get this going? In Observable, we can just start typing, um, entering code into these little blocks. And we'll start with a block that allows us to import data that will drive our visualizations. We could load it as a static file, or we can use this import input method where we create a prompt with this label, allow it to take in CSV files, and it has to be there. Uh, we can then load the file, and we get this array. So these are an export I've taken out from Goodreads. Uh, you can take out as well if you're um, you're using Goodreads. And the next step, we've got it, the raw data here. I just wanted to make a neater table, and this is a way of mapping data from one array uh, to another. So what's happening here? I'm creating this variable called book data. Once it's loaded Goodread books from whatever, it's going to map for each row in that array it's going to map it into a new set of columns. So instead of the whole big bunch of columns here, uh, I can rename and maybe type uh, cast some of these file data columns. Um, in the table below, I'm going to show you how you can maybe use the ISBN to display book covers. So I'm going to bring ISBNs, just call it cover for clarity, I'm going to bring the title and the author. So it's going to pick out for each object in the array. It's going to bring in the title. So knowing that there's a object uh, with the field title and author, I can rely on that and so on. It's going to take date started. Notice I'm using uh, quotation marks because uh, it's a string. There's a space in there. It's going to be cast as a date. So in our Gantt chart, we have the start date and the end date. We're going to store these as date fields so that we'll be able to make that calculation. We'll grab the number of pages as well as uh, the categories. I've got a number of categories I've set up for my own Goodreads bookshelves, but for the purposes of clarity here, uh, I'm just going to take anything that's already labeled as nonfiction with this ternary operator and set it as nonfiction. Everything else is going to be considered fiction. But you could set multiple categories here as you prefer. I'm going to bring my own rating and then Goodreads average rating in as well. Now, 
my approach has been to take the Goodreads data and then create that spreadsheet, load it on. All it needs is these fields for this to work, but you, if you're not using Goodreads or for any other reason you might want to create a spreadsheet, you can do that and manually fill it in. In fact, even though Goodreads as a platform stores the date started, the date read, um, it doesn't actually export both of them. So I had to manually fill in the date started reading um, into this for, uh, for the year. So it's, it's a pretty big export in terms of columns of data, There's a lot of data in there, um, but nonetheless they don't allow exporting of absolutely everything. That's the spreadsheet I loaded. We've parsed it and mapped it over into book data. And in our next little module, we then group this data by the year. And the year we can get, and I'm taking it from the data finished reading a book. Um, so we run this command. So we take method from the D3 library. We group this array and how do we group it? Well, we grab onto the date field and finish and take the full year with this method from it. So this groups the data by year. I happen to have it seemingly from uh, 19 different sets. Um, some of the books don't have a year set. Um, but for the rest of this example, I will just focus on my 2021 red books. So now we've got the data in. The next step is to start doing some cool stuff with that, and there's just tons you can do with D3. A simple thing to do, of course, is to display a table, uh, like this one, where I've customized uh, how I'm displaying it. Um, at the top, just I've mapped out this uh, color scale, uh, which we see in use over here for the ratings. So here we have, let's assume the rating goes from 0 to 5. We'll see that these three colors are the range for this domain. So if it's about 4.5 out of 5, we'll get this green value. 5 is the same as 4.5. Anything that's 4.5 or higher, we'll, we'll have this. And then we'll then you know, map towards other values, this yellowy color and this red color, as we see in use here. And how's this table defined? I think it looks reasonably nice. Uh, on our digital bookshelf, um, here's the the code for that. So let's go through this. I create this variable, the Goodreads table, um, using the inbuilt table object here, um, table class, where we take this book data, so not the grouped data actually, um, but we filter it. I'm filtering it here just to year 2021 for clarity. Uh, the kind of same approach we're grabbing onto the finished reading date, take the year from there, check that it matches 2021. We're setting a fixed layout for the table, not dynamic. We can choose to show a different amount of rows if we like. We can play this again and uh -huh, immediately it gets updated here, 25 rows now. It's going to be initially started sorted by the start date, um, but it is out of the box already sortable uh, by by column there, which is nice. Now we're going to do some formatting. Uh, well, in reverse order is what it begins by. So I'll come back to this in a moment. We see the rating here and average rating are the same. Basically, they're taking the number formatting down to um, two decimals where decimal places where possible, and we're doing some styling where we feed the color. Um, into our uh, mapping here where we pass in the number, the rating, and get back the color hex code. So the background of this area gets colored by that with a bit of padding to make it look a bit nicer. And that can be styled as you like. Um, and then very simply we've got the start and finish. It's formatted in this nice uh, year, month, day format. But what's happening here? This is something I added which is to display uh, book titles, uh, book covers, um, as these small little pictures. And handily, there is this open public API, uh, openlibrary.org, where 
you can pass the ISBN of a book, and if they have it stored, they will return a JPEG, S for small image, M for medium, and so on, uh, of that book, if it's found. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, writing some HTML to render an image, and the source is dynamically different for each row. As this table gets built, each row from our book array, our book data array, gets passed through it each time the cover, in other words, the ISBN. So that covers the special formatting we here see here, the covers, the dates, the coloration, the decimal points. And then at the bottom here, I've just put some hard-coded pixel widths of the columns. So this isn't too wide, um, and so on. And then that could be adjusted further. Start and finish columns have a nice width to begin with, and so on. And there are a number of other options you could tweak when you're creating a table. But that's pretty nice. I've got a little uh, bookshelf table of my own, and you can do what you want with that. Next, let's take a look at the timeline how that's been built, and that's really driving from this book list repo. And I think this is pretty informative. I can see the books that have been savored, can see, visualize nicely the flow of reading through the year. It's quite a lot of books actually for me for that year, so it's a big plot, but uh, I like it. It's interesting to me. It sparked a lot of uh, nice reminiscing. How does that work? Well, there's this big timeline plot method with a couple of helper functions that I'll talk through. So for the helper functions, we see that for each line in the Gantt chart, we see title and author. This is a helper function that splits it nicely, and combines the title with the author. So we'll have uh, the title, Ambiguity Machines and Other Stories in this case, by well, Vandana Singh. So that's going to help with that. Split last name. Another helper function to make the domain of the dates. So when we've got our plot x-axis, run the full year um, from the first to the last of any given year. But the main meat of what's happening to plot this thing is here in this function that's being defined, where we just use a D3 plot with uh, a margin on the right and X and Y and colors defined. So the Y domain is how high it is gets uh, determined by how many rows there are, by title, by author, um, sorted by finish date. So we get this nice flow of the ones that we finished earliest all the way down to the ones we finished last in the year. And x, y, date, so x axis wise, we get a date domain in a grid. For the colors, we've just got two. You could expand that to more. And we've got this color selector here at the bottom where you can pick colors for the categories you've determined. And we are determining to show them in the legend. So jumping back up, fiction, nonfiction. This is the legend on display. Lovely. And the marks themselves are being plotted. This array so plotting the x-axis value uh, where the starting point of the block is for the start date and the end point is the finish date. And the color is going to be filled in by whatever the category is, so fiction or non-fiction. Then after that, we have the text. And it starts from the finish. So on the x-axis, it gets positioned after the finish date for each row. And the y position is a map by line. And the text is also derived from there. And that's that's all you need. So these these are creating the marks as in these these elements and the Gantt chart. And at the end here, it's just importing the table from the standard inputs uh, from Observable. So that, that was all of the code. As mentioned, you can just take a fork, 
load your own data, and as long as it's got the st date started, um, then you'll be press play, and you'll get the table, and you'll get the uh, Gantt chart, and you'll learn more about your uh, reading habits, perhaps. Or you could wire the data up to a file you load onto through this data section here, and then always have it ready. So you could turn this into some kind of more publicly visible and permanent display of your reading, for example. And then you could take this in many, many directions. The Observable has tons of examples of people doing cool stuff with D3. So you could, for example, create these nice kind of plots where you see the different views uh, grouped by rating, grouped by the page count, for instance. Are you reading short books, large books, very, very long books? Uh, how they get distributed, you know, Here's a cool site with lots of examples and a timeline like this of reading a very different approach. All this uh, becomes very easily possible because you've got the data nicely here and the full power of D3 at your fingertips. Uh, in terms of date, getting data in, there is an API, I believe, that Goodreads has that you could leverage or uh, you could use some other service, open library, something like that where you kind of keep a log of the things you're reading and then just use this, uh, maybe your Observable HQ page or your own website with D3. That's the kind of front end where you display, organize, sort and enjoy uh, reflecting on what you've been reading. Well, this was a little fun little adventure uh, as far as I'm concerned. Hopefully gave you a little spark of inspiration to maybe build a little digital bookshelf of your own. Uh, let me know if there is uh, anything that was unclear or I can delve deeper into or if you've got cool ideas to share. And in the meantime, don't forget to stay well and keep on reading. Thanks for watching. See you next time.